day you realize the stars you were chasing shine bright deep inside you. When will you ever let it shine from within and cast off? Hello, and welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Key Bearer. Today, we recall Castle Oblivion. Hey, you know, we never did figure out that mysterious message. So this whole exercise has been entirely pointless. Actually, Riku gets in touch, telling the others that a new world is open in the journal, and that exploring it should finally give them some answers. Unfortunately, they realize that since the journal was reset, so was Sora, and thus can't ask him to look into it. I'm fine. My partition isn't affected. Isn't that convenient? But Sora... We can't send him out there when he doesn't know what's going on. So why don't you go? You remember everything and you're capable. Sort of. But no, Mickey decides to go back into the datascape and recruit Sora regardless. So the king goes to meet him as he wakes up in Traverse Town. Sora, this was the day that your journey began. I know, because I was here too. You were? Doing what exactly? After, quite frankly, being more cryptic than he was in the beginning of the game, Sora agrees to help Mickey out, and the two set out for Castle Oblivion. Or at least Sora does as he arrives alone. Who are you? Me? I'm nobody. Ha! So the mysterious stranger gives Sora a card that allows him to enter the next room, where he meets illusions of his friends from the island. The interesting thing is that the events here follow the same course as they did in your initial visit. Or at least, they can. You can choose to either talk to everyone in the same order as before, in a different order, or seek something else out entirely. And no, I'm not gonna go over each eventuality. This game has taken me long enough to cover as it is! After leaving the room, Sora realizes he can't remember who it was he met in there. Oh, I don't even... But no time to dwell on that, as the stranger gives him more cards. The... This is where things get really interesting. In each world, you can walk out with one of three cards, which one you get depends on which path you take. In Traverse Town and Wonderland, it's more order of operations, and in Olympus Coliseum, Agrabah, and Hall of Bastion, it depends on how fast you complete their time trials. And yes, you do need to get all of them for a secret cutscene. Why do you ask? Anyway, after each room, Sora forgets who he met, retaining only the memory of meeting them, and that feeling tugs away at him. The stranger recommends that Sora let go of the hurt, but Sora being Sora, he decides to hold on to it. He recognizes the importance of holding on to it. This doesn't sit well with the stranger. <gasps> it's way past time that you learned what real hurt feels like! Because quite frankly, nobody in this entire franchise knows hurt quite like Roxas. Yeah, if you can't figure it out from the music and the dual keyblades, then I don't know what to tell you. I will say though, why is it that Sora vs. Roxas, regardless what the game is, there's always some of the best fights in the series. After the fight, Roxas has officially had it with Sora's nice guy thing and yields, giving him one final card that will finally give us the answers we've been trying to get since the beginning. So naturally, this is where Mickey catches up. I'm so glad I finally caught up to you. Sorry that it took me so long. I know you ended up having to do all the work on your own. I just couldn't get here sooner. Why not? What the hell was keeping you? Anyway, inside the two meet Naminé, who explains that this was all essentially a test. When repairing the real Sora's memories, Naminé found a series of memories that aren't his, but belong to people he's connected to. However, she kept them from him because the pain they caused might destroy his heart. So before giving them back to Sora, she had to make sure he could handle it. And... I'm not on board with this. Not entirely, anyway. The concept is fine, it's just... Why was it Data Sora that needed to go through all this when it's the real Sora who needed to learn how to accept hurt? This feels like it accomplishes nothing! Anyway, Sora and Mickey behold the memories. Sora is confused, and Mickey is stoned off his ass. They learn that the memories are from Roxas, Axel, Shion, Terra, Aqua, and Ven. Naminé explains that they all need saving, and only the real Sora can do it. So Mickey promises to relay all this to him. But first, Data Sora needs to keep a promise the real one made. I almost forgot. I have a message for you, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> God damn it, that's just too sweet. 
And so Mickey writes the letter that we saw at the end of Cage 2, essentially telling Sora about the Sora, people who need saving. All of that just to learn what was in that stupid message. But man was it a hell of a ride. Oh, and one more thing. In the secret ending, Mickey seeks counsel with Master Yen Sid, who tells him that with the two halves of Xehanort, Ansem and Zemnis being defeated, the two halves will return to the whole, bringing back the original. Thus, he has quite the proposal. Mickey, please summon Sora hither. Riku as well. Of course, but why? To show us the mark of mastery. That can only end so well. Anyway, that was Castle Oblivion, and... Honestly, I think that should have been the entire game. Seriously, I think it would have been really cool if they took the concept of taking divergent pathways through stories we've already experienced and made it into its own game. It might have helped make the retread feel a little less egregious, and if you set it in the real Castle Oblivion with the real Sora, it might have been better received by the general fanbase as less pointless. As a world on its own, though, it's a lot of fun and a pretty damn good finale. Well, that's it for this episode. Tune in next time as I give my overall thoughts on the game.